my sound booth is done. So this video is going to be about the final phases of turning that old walk-in freezer into my sound booth for recording my voiceover and podcast work. I'm sure I'm pretty tired looking and sounding right now, but I, believe me, I am really excited about this. <laughs> Last time was all about comparing the sound levels using a meter to see what kind of noise was coming in before and after we hung up some mass loaded vinyl. So the next day we got back into doing more drywall. Alrighty, so it is the next day and uh, before my dad and younger brother get here to help with the rest of it, I've got to tape up the seams. So what we've done is you'll notice the original walls, the seams of, of the boards are going horizontal this, this direction. So what we're doing is running everything else so that their seams are in the opposite direction. So in this case, up and down, top to bottom. Because basically, I mean, that helps block any sound that's going to go through those, those air gaps at the seams. But of course, even doing that is not perfect because there's still seams. Sound is going to find its way through. So we've got this special tape. It feels, it's almost like electrical tape. I'm not entirely sure what it's made of. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, yeah, I'll we'll use this to just do a strip along all of the different seams. These guys especially the wall and then once we get the rest of the drywall up we'll tape those seams before we start putting up the acoustic foam panels when we were researching the best options for soundproofing a space like this one of the things that came up was using a green noise proofing glue between sheets of drywall and that's supposed to help cut out a lot of sound from passing through however that stuff is pretty pricey so we ended up finding another option another video talked about using carpet glue instead of the green noise proofing glue this person claimed that the amount of noise that it cut out was comparable and it's a lot cheaper. You can buy bigger tubs of it for a much better deal. So we decided to go with that option. Day two progress. We got this panel all the way around. So here, and then this one here on the other side of the door. Did not get as far along as we were hoping we would, but it's been uh, yeah, a little slower going, but still really good progress. We'll just keep working on it. A few weeks later, my brother and I were able to finish hanging the rest of the drywall. Now we discovered during all of this that the original room was not entirely square. So we did the best we could to accommodate that when we cut the drywall. However, there were still several gaps and different corners and edges. So I decided to use that green noise proofing glue that I mentioned earlier to basically kind of caulk and fill those different gaps. Now, if you do what I did here with using your finger to smooth the edge, wear gloves. It was a bit of a mess to clean up afterward. It would have been a lot easier if I had worn gloves. And once all the gaps were filled and the rest of the seams taped, it was time to put in the carpet. So I used more of the leftover carpet that I had gotten for my office from our church when they replaced some of their carpet. Because of the shape of what was left, I had to cut it into a few segments in order to get everything to fit just right. So it was a little bit of a, creating a puzzle. And then on top of that, I put another rug. It's just gonna help add some extra padding for my feet and also some extra sound absorption just for recording. So we are finally ready to start putting up the acoustic panels. You know, the thing that makes it look like a sound booth. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Oh, wow. Thick. So these come in vacuum sealed and just packed super tight together. These ones are by Hemmerly. Figure out how to open this thing and hopefully it doesn't explode like a can of biscuits. Of course. <laughs> comes with some 
and spare uh -oh. spare adhesives. Wait a minute, what is happening here? Wow, the whole salaga is already starting to expand. So then we've got gray and black, which is fine. What is happening? Well, these ones are working. <laughs> Hear the air escaping from one of them. Ah. Oh, okay. I must have cut into this bag when I was unsealing it. Okay. Oops. Uh oh. <laughs> it's alive. Oh no. Ah, this one's expanding too. <laughs> what is happening? I'm making it worse. Ugh. Those guys, help! <laughs> All right, now let's do this last gray one. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> well, that's one box. <laughs> I've got five more to open up to fill all the walls and ceiling. That's a whole lot of foam panels. I have noticed it looks like the black ones are expanding a lot faster than the gray ones. According to the help stuff I was seeing on Amazon, he was saying that these things, you know, they promote it as it takes like five seconds to expand and they're really great about that. I definitely believe that about the black ones. The gray ones, not so much. I mean, I know it'll just, just take some time and once they're you know, not stacked on top of each other, that'll help too. But. Just something that I noticed while doing all this. <laughs> These particular foam panels have an adhesive backing, so they're just peel and stick, and they went right onto the drywall with no problem. You'll notice that I am not only alternating black to gray, but also that I am alternating the direction each panel is facing. This is for a couple reasons. By alternating the direction of the wedges, that helps break up the way that sound waves hit the walls, and it just adds to how effective it is at absorbing those sound waves. The other reason is that it looks pretty cool. <laughs> and with that, it is done. This turned into an all-day project with frequent breaks and lots of help from the kids, but We've got it up on the ceiling. We've got it on the sides, around the wall. Put stuff on the door. So I'm not planning on you know, be facing the door at all. I'll probably have my back to the door so that way I can have the light on my scripts. So I just did a little bit on here to just kind of help break up any stray reflections that may happen. It's done. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do next is we'll do another sound test using the sound meter. Have the kids go outside, hoot and holler, and we'll see just how much of a difference it makes. I'm guessing it's not gonna be completely perfect just because of how we did it. Yeah, there's some inconsistencies, you know, only the mass loaded vinyl on one side and stuff like that, but it's gonna be a whole lot better <laughs> than the, what it was before. So we'll start with the door open again, but now we're gonna have the kids make a whole bunch of noise outside, just like we did before, and we'll compare the results. Um, I'm gonna go for a little bit with the door open, and then I'll close the door, and we'll see where that puts us. Okay, that's good. 
<laughs> so, one thing I did notice watching the footage back is that I could still hear the one that was out here. So th this is a set of double doors that are, you know, there's, there's the booth, here's these double doors, comes out to the outside. Uh, this is the wall of the booth. We could still hear one of the kids who was stationed here because I had left this door open so that it would be easier to holler to them all um, so they could hear me. So I'm guessing with this door closed, then we should be in better shape. And actually one of the things I'm planning on doing at some point is just removing these doors altogether and just insulating it into a, turning it into a wall like it should be. Considering that we could not hear, at least watching the footage back on this, could not hear the kids that were on the side that we put the mass loaded vinyl on. So that's really good. I am so incredibly thankful and blessed that I've got this space now. It is, it's been quite a journey. I mean, my very first sound booth was this thing. <laughs> put a microphone inside with, memory, with mattress foam. Went from that to a PVC pipe frame with moving blankets, and now this. I am, I am just so incredibly grateful to God for his provision and for the support of people like my Patreon community who really made this all possible. I hope you've enjoyed watching my journey to this point and creating this space. There are links in the description below to where you can find all the different bits and pieces we use to put this all together. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.